Today, we will rank every melee from easiest to hardest in Season 4. To be considered easy, a spec needs to have a high reward to effort ratio, otherwise known as a low skill floor. If you can reach most of your potential without needing to put in much effort, you're going to have a much easier time climbing. For melee, we're looking for fail-safe rotations, strong passive defense, and simple win conditions. As a bonus, we also need to have flexible lobbies and should be hard to grief if all we care about is solo shuffle. And if you're watching this video looking for a new spec to play, Skillcapped has everything you need to climb rating instantly in the new season. From class guides, arena fundamentals, game knowledge, and more, our courses are specifically designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals faster than you thought possible. We do this by only working with the best and most experienced players around, who will now even review your gameplay and offer personalized advice for climbing. Everything we offer is backed up by a rank up guarantee where we literally promise you will gain rating while using our service. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount links below. For now, back to the video. First up, let's go over Frost Death Knight, which is one of the weirdest specs in the game. If you judge its rotation alone, then Frost DK might seem incredibly easy on paper. After all, it's pretty much limited to three damage buttons, which is some of the fewest in the game across all specs. But remember, in order to truly be considered easy, we need to think about our other criteria. Unlike the majority of melee specs in the game, Frost DK is a pretty backwards play style, literally. Its entire goal is just to set up AoE goes every minute, grouping up the entire team, popping CDs, and then cleaving everyone down through stuns and strangulate. While this is one of the best burst windows in the entire game, it's pretty much the only thing Frosty Ks are good at, and if your solo shuffle partner DRs any of your setup, you're going to have a bad time. On top of this, because Frosty K passive defense is relatively weak, it needs to do a ton of kiting in between its one minute setups, which is unlike any other melee. So in order to truly succeed, you need to make very calculated defensive decisions and spend the majority of the game avoiding damage. So despite having an easy rotation and straightforward win condition, Frost DKs are conceptually backward compared to most melee, and will be going on the medium difficulty tier. Unholy DK is generally more meta, and many players think it's even more difficult, but are they right? Just looking at damage buttons alone doesn't explain the difference in difficulty between both specs, as Unholy has 4 real damage buttons compared to Frost 3. Instead, we need to think about Unholy DK cooldowns. While Frost has uniform 1 minute cooldown cadence, Unholy has multiple disjointed CDs, leading to a complicated sequencing of abilities at different stages of the game. Their complete cooldown stack gives Unholy an insane damage spike at the beginning of games when everything is ready. This is why Unholy is always scariest in the opener and when their damage is well tuned, they present a massive execution test. But since DK damage has undergone some significant nerfs throughout the expansion, even their burst can feel underwhelming on its own, giving the spec far less agency over games. Throughout the game, Unholy needs to prioritize how and when to align its set of cooldowns, which is a significantly more complicated decision when compared directly to Frost, who has a very straightforward win condition every minute. And although Unholy is marginally tankier, it does suffer some survivability issues and will be going in the hard tier. Demon Hunter has gained a reputation over the years as one of the easiest melee in the game, but is this still true? Although the spec might have gotten slightly more complex over the years, it remains true that Demon Hunter continues to have one of the highest reward to effort ratios in Arena. Obviously, DH has some of the best mobility out of any melee, which gives them enormous offensive power. Unlike other melee who might find themselves struggling to chase targets, Demon Hunter mobility is so good that their damage is almost always felt by the enemy team. Even if you make a targeting mistake, it's quite simple to readjust your positioning instantly and just hit somebody else. What we learned last season is that Demon Hunters actually have a low damage to rating coefficient, which means lower rated players are doing roughly the same amount of DPS as rank 1s. So it seems like doing damage really isn't an issue for needing to climb, and this trend will likely continue in Season 4 with the returning tier set. And although DH passive defensives did take a hit in March, we still think the spec will be one of the easiest melee in the game going into next season. On the flip side, Feral is widely considered one of the hardest melee to play, despite some 3v3 success in late Season 3. You should know by now that the entire playstyle of Feral revolves around landing cyclones in order to burst with Feral Frenzy. And with the entire tier set revolving around Wild Attunement, this playstyle is extremely constrictive, turning the spec into a pseudo-caster. In fact, many Feral Druid players have actively spoken out about this playstyle, arguing that it's pretty exhausting to play and begging for a redesign. Defensively, Feral did see some improvements at the end of Season 3, with buffs to Frenzied Regeneration. Despite this, the spec continues to have the highest death rate in Solo Shuffle, significantly beating out other heavily trained specs. So for the meantime, Feral will be staying on the hardest tier. It's just far too punishing to play, even for experienced players. Up next is Survival Hunter, which is looking quite strong going into Season 4. 
Looking at the solo shuffle ladder on EU, you might be surprised to see just how far this spec can be pushed in the bracket. Most of the Survival Hunter meta has been driven by players dedicated to the spec, and there is a reason why many of them are one tricks. Survival is definitely the most difficult hunter spec out of the three, and although they all share the same toolkit, survival has the added complexity of a pseudo melee spec. In order to truly succeed as a survival hunter, you really need to focus on maximizing sustained damage, especially considering next season's tier set includes a few different multipliers to Mongoose Bite. Hunters aren't really known for their survivability, and after a redesign of survival tactics, the spec is a bit less forgiving into casters, so just like last time, survival will be joining the hard tier once more. Moving on, we have Windwalker Monk, a spec which has proven to be quite good in the mid to late expansion. In the past, Windwalker Monk's adopted a hit and run playstyle similar to Sub Rogues or Frost DKs, weaving in and out of melee range in order to set up big goes every minute with Serenity. These days, Windwalker Monk's have enough sustained damage and strong defensive cooldowns to act more like a brawler, staying in the fight more while Serenity is on cooldown. And speaking of which, Windwalker Burst is so strong that it is guaranteed to have instant high impact, leading to a very straightforward win condition that pops up every minute. Next season, this burst will be even stronger thanks to the return of the Season 1 tier set. In many ways, Windwalker Monk is just a better Frost DK, having a simple burst setup that has a high chance to either force a CD or outright score a kill. Even though the spec might have a bit of finesse, the brawling playstyle of Windwalker has earned it a repeat spot on the medium difficulty tier. Red Paladin is a spec that has gone through a roller coaster of tuning this expansion. Immediately after its rework in Season 1, Rhett damage was so drastically overtuned that it would have definitely made our very easy category. While Rhett Paladin is still pretty strong, it's definitely not as free to play. With that said, Rhett is still a good beginner option for many players thanks to the sheer amount of defensive cooldowns it has. Between Shield of Vengeance, Divine Shield, Lay on Hands, and more, Rhett Paladins are a wall of CDs, all while being passively durable thanks to talents like Sanctified Plates. With that said, Rhett Paladin can feel pretty lobby dependent in Solo Shuffle and is really awkward to play when paired with the Holy Pally due to forbearance preventing CDs from being used. And while Crusade is arguably a more complicated cooldown to use compared to Avenging Wrath, the Rhett Paladin win condition hasn't really changed much in the past decade, winning games during bursty cooldown windows with the repeatable CC chains on enemy healers. So even though it might not be the noob slayer it once was, Rhett Paladin will be retaining its place on the easy tier. Now it's time to cover each rogue spec one by one, starting with the increasingly popular Assassination. Rogue saw a pretty big rework in 10.2, with each spec benefiting in unique ways. Of all three rogue specs, Assassination arguably saw the most quality of life improvements compared to the other two. The redesign to Indiscriminate Carnage solved a key problem with the spec, which is the fact that it was so global intensive to keep up bleeds across multiple targets. But in 10.2, this became much easier, as now Garrett and Rupture could be applied to multiple targets at once. Along with this, the redesign made it significantly more appealing to play with Shadow Dance, and now that many rogues have shifted over to Night Elf, it's much easier to keep up empowered Garrett's across multiple targets. Between all three rogue specs, Assassination has, by a wide margin, the most straightforward win condition. Keep up dots and kidney on DR. But before you get too excited, bear in mind that the Cloak of Shadows PvP talent seems to be nerfed in Season 4, which will make survivability slightly more challenging for all rogues. But even though it might be squishier than the other two rogue specs, Asa will be earning a spot on the medium difficulty tier. Outlaw is often considered an overwhelming spec to play as a beginner. It's one of those specs that routinely shows up in tournaments and on the front page of the ladder. But if you check log data, its win rate is shockingly low from challenger to rival ratings. So what's going on? Outlaw is a very APM and maintenance heavy spec, to the point where many players feel like they need an entire week or a package in order to play it. Between understanding Roll the Bones procs, keeping up Slice and Dice, using Blade Flurry, and managing CDR, Outlaw Rogue has a lot going on, and it's really easy to mess up on damage if you don't keep up on maintenance. On top of this, the Rogue redesign in 10.2 turned Outlaw into a weird burst spec, where Subterfuge is technically its main burst window, since it makes Between the Eyes have no cooldown. This means treating Vanish and Shadow Meld like they're offensives, which is honestly a bit backwards compared to the other two specs. And now with slightly nerfed defensives, we'll be putting Outlaw on the very hard tier. That brings us to Subtlety, who was considered very hard during our last update. Sub was another spec to go on a roller coaster of class tuning during Season 3, starting off strong immediately after its rework, where it was doing remarkable damage. During the early season solo shuffle tournament, Calvish practically swept every round, which made Sub look insanely broken. Then after a few key nerfs and a buff to everyone's stamina, Sub really fell off, being replaced by Outlaw and even Assassination as the premier rogue spec. 
Sub's damage isn't quite as punchy anymore, and even if it was, doing well on the spec requires a ton of game knowledge, knowing how and when to spot win conditions by triangulating cooldowns with DRs. So once again, Sub will be going on the very hard tier and will likely be the most challenging rogue spec in Season 4. Next up is Enhancement Shaman, who is honestly one of the hardest specs to rank. Enhance will be keeping its Season 3 tier set, which means another season of playing the Lava Lash build. The rotation with this build does require some stacking modifiers, chaining together Ellie Blast, Ice Strike, and then Frost Shock to do optimal damage, which does add a layer of complexity compared to some of the easier specs we've mentioned. While Enhance has been known as a GCD capped spec, it doesn't really have enough tools to meaningfully impact the game. Lightning Lasso isn't a particularly useful stun to have as a melee, which means Enhancement Shamans are more or less a damage bot. Defensively, Enhance is one of the squishiest melee in the game, and it's not super uncommon to just die through Astral Shift. So because their reward to effort ratio isn't that great, Enhance will be falling on our hard difficulty tier. Let's wrap things up with Warriors, starting with what is often considered the more difficult of the two. ARMS definitely has a bit more responsibility than Fury. While both specs share a similar toolkit and have fairly simple damage rotations, ARMS is typically seen as a pseudo support spec, having a bit more utility overall while being less punchy with damage. While Fury had some traction in the early expansion, a mini rework to the ARMS talent tree gave them ignore pain once again, and because of this, ARMS is actually a bit tankier, but can still suffer some survivability issues when Die by the Sword is on cooldown. Next season, the spec might be slightly easier thanks to the return of the Season 1 tier set, which offers flat damage increases to Mortal Strike rather than feeding Execute procs like the current tier set bonus. With this though, ARMS still isn't a spec that can carry offensively and in order to truly shine, players really need to lean into the strength of its utility. So despite being one of the most vanilla melee in the game, ARMS has enough defensive responsibility to go in the medium difficulty tier. That brings us to Fury Warrior, the quintessential melee brawler. It's been a long time meme that Fury is a notoriously simple spec to play rotationally. Want to do damage? Just build some rage and hit whatever lights up on your bar. Next season, Fury will be seeing the return of its Season 2 tier set, which could be changing the standard build once again to focus less on Odin's Fury. In some ways, this could simplify the spec slightly, returning to a greater emphasis on sustained damage, helping solidify the spec as a true melee brawler. Anyways, since Fury has less responsibilities overall, it will be going on a tier below Arms Warrior. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that's it for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.